coming. We're going to keep this brief and formal. Um, this is the uh, third annual Atlantic Motorcycle and ATV show. We're very excited to uh, be here. I'm going to make a few introductions. Um, Frank Woods is going to come up, make, uh, introduce you to some of the key players, have a light lunch. You can speak with who you need to speak with and uh, to take a tour of the show. So thank you very much for coming. Um, first, I'd like uh, to get, uh, invite up Joanne Farquhar. She's the Director of Communications and Public Affairs for the Canadian Off-Highway Vehicle Distributors Council. And uh, they are the owners of the show, along with the Moped Motorcycle Industry Council. So Joanne, come up and just say a few words. We appreciate that. I want to keep this shirt and sweet as well. Just welcome to the show. Enjoy the show, wander around, talk to all of our member companies, and uh, you'll learn more than you probably ever thought you were ever going to hear about motorcycles and ATVs and anything to do with off-road riding and, and on-road riding. Uh, we are the uh, owners of seven shows across the country. This is uh, the Moncton Show, which uh, we look forward to every year. This, uh, as I said, it's the third year that we've been uh, in Atlantic Canada, and uh, this has been a great success. We look forward to every year coming here with all of our industry uh, member companies. They are the. Uh, this is the only show where you're going to find all of our member companies in the industry there, and the uh, the. the, the Ultimate in uh, the 2010 models, and uh, any questions you have, please feel free to ask. So enjoy the show. If you've got any questions, we're here. Tim Stover uh, is the manager of the show uh, from Human Rights and CUHV. Uh, we both can answer any questions you might have, but right now it's just enjoy your uh, lunch and uh, look forward to. Uh, Thank you very much, Joanne and uh, Tim. Warm welcome. Thank you for everything you do for us. Much appreciated. Uh, some of the key players that I'd like to. Uh, draw your attention to. There are uh, players in this show and players in our sport and in our industry. Uh, folks who are here at the show and are available to you as the press uh, to uh, find out more about what they're doing in motorcycling, particularly as it involves uh, the East Coast. And I'm starting off with no particular order, although we are saving the best till last. Uh, I do want to introduce from the Atlantic Road Racing League from Shubenacadie, Nova Scotia. Halifax is his hometown, actually. Former number one plate holder in the uh, Atlantic Motorcycle Racing Series and now president of the Atlantic Racing League, we welcome Terry Steves. Terry will be down on the floor, uh, down on the wall as a matter of fact, right across from the BMW display. So anyone who is interested in speaking about road racing here on the East Coast can contact Terry in that regard. Also from the New Brunswick ATV Federation, the sponsors of the stage that I will be uh, performing on uh, this weekend, my thanks to the organization for that. We're pleased to welcome Daniel Boucher, Jacques Nadeau, and Jacques Poyer. Those gentlemen will also be available. I'm not quite sure where your display is, gentlemen, so uh, when the press are, uh, are speaking with you, perhaps you could point that out to them on the floor and they may want to get down and get some footage down there as well. Also, although uh, I don't see him uh, gathering with us yet, a really big player in the East Coast. He is the publisher of the uh, Nova Scotia Motorcycle Tourist uh, Guide. The tour guide for Nova Scotia works uh, very closely with the provincial government and what have you and is responsible for bringing many thousands of motorcyclists and their wallets. Having said that, <laughs> you couldn't have picked a better time to watch <laughs> Carol Nesbitt. Harold. I'm just pointing out some of the key players just to bring you up to speed here, Harold. So, uh, Harold, rather, so as the uh, press are able to see you now, they may have some questions uh, as to what you do here on the right. East Coast uh, you. with your efforts. And again, we much appreciate you attending. Uh, one of the gentlemen that was unable to make it so far, although uh, if our record holds, he may be coming in the door right now, not the case, uh, and that is Clinton Smoke from the Yamaha Riding Academy. I strongly encourage the press to have a chat with this man because he has been such an incredible player in the uh, Canadian motorcycle industry. I'll put a number to it that makes it very simple to explain what this man has accomplished. With his Yamaha Riding Ac uh, Academy over the last few years, Clinton Smoke has graduated 20,000 young motorcyclists. When he sent me that note, I said, Clinton, check your computer. I think your keyboard is stuck and zero is sticking. <laughs> 20,000 riders, an amazing accomplishment. And again, to the members of the press, I highly recommend that you have a chat with uh, Clinton from the Yamaha Riding Academy. Well, as I said, we saved our best till last. A guy who's been making front page news, certainly here in Moncton and uh, right across Canada. We are so very, very proud of this young man. I had the opportunity to interview him at the Toronto Motorcycle Show, the MMIC show in downtown Toronto, and uh, that was before he headed to South America to the uh, Dakar Rally. He became the uh, sixth rider from Canada in our uh, Canadian motorsport history to have finished that event, 
and he did so finishing in the top 60, recording a 55th place finish. He is also, uh, aside from that international exposure that he's brought to himself, to this country, and to his sponsors, Honda most notably, he is also a key man in training young riders. You know, I mentioned Clinton Smoke and his Yamaha Riding Academy. Witness that Patrick Trahan also has a young riders uh, school. It is called the Red Rider Program, and Patrick will be happy to expand on that, as well as telling you all about his Dakar um, episodes. Uh, Joanne, I don't know if you've uh, allowed time for this, but I really would like to invite Patrick up to say a few words on the mic before the press gets out. Ladies and gentlemen, Patrick Trahan. Wow, thank you, Frank. Uh, but like I said to him uh, in Toronto, uh, I said that he asked me, so are you going to finish or whatever? And I looked at him, I said, yes. He asked me why. Because I said, I believe in it. And when he saw me, I told him, I said, do you see? I did finish. And that was the key since uh, 10 years. Uh, I started in 2000, in 2001, and uh, didn't finish at that time. I said, uh, I got to go back at one point. And within those 10 years, I stayed in the, in the, in the industry, trying to be on off-road and dual sports and adventure. And I said, one day, I'll go back and I'll finish what I started. And uh, 2010 was that, <coughs> that year. Sorry, I'm a little bit uh, emotional. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's actually the first, since I'm back, it's actually the first time that I meet uh, media, uh, really. And uh, actually, when, when I finished, uh, people say, so how do you feel? I was just ready to go again. You know, they, they, at the, the last stage, <coughs> and the last stage was not in Buenos Aires. It was 400 kilometers from there. We had to ride again on the, on the street for 400 kilometers. So it was done but not totally done, we still had to ride. So I, I couldn't really feel it that it was over. Everybody was like, there's a camera, yes. I knew it was over, but I just didn't feel it. For me, it was just another day finish and I was ready to get the road book and go again. So, um, yeah, and uh, I'll, I'll, I'll speak a little bit in French. Parce que je parle français aussi, je viens de Montréal. Et puis, c'est ça, depuis depuis la fin du rallye, j'ai pas vraiment eu le temps de De, de, pas de l'apprécier, mais de, de vraiment découvrir que, que j'avais vraiment fini. Puis c'est des occasions comme ça, avec les, les médias, que là, je suis un, un peu plus émotionnel, parce que là, je vraiment, je le vois. Quand je vois des, des articles sur moi dans le journal, je dis, oh, vraiment, j'ai fini. Donc, c'est, quand ça fait 10 ans que tu, ça fait plus que 10 ans, ça fait 25 ans que j'essaie de, de faire le Dakar, parce qu'à 15 ans, je rêvais déjà du Dakar sans faire de moto. Mais j'y rêvais, j'y rêvais, j'y rêvais. Donc, ça fait, ça fait tout ce temps-là, puis, Quand ça, ça arrive, ben c'est, ça, ça va me prendre un an avant de vraiment, vraiment l'apprécier et de le réaliser. Là. Donc, euh, c'est, c'est, c'est formidable. Uh, and uh, yeah, to say a few words about uh, Junior Red Riders, it's uh, actually my sponsor was was incredible this year. Um, I was lucky actually. I finished, but I finished because I wanted to finish, but also I had the right tool, I had the, the right bike. This year is 450 and. Uh, Honda makes a CRF 450. It was developed for Baja 1000, and this engine is just incredible. I rode 9,300 kilometers for that enduro bike, which people, you know, they think, oh yeah, after 60 hours you got to do the motor. No, I, yeah, I rode, you know, 9,000 kilometers on it. And um, so the engine was prepared in Europe. Had a team, an excellent team with uh, with all, uh, you know, three mechanics and. Because I had a big crash on the second day, and the whole navigation went down. And I thought my rally was over at that time. But now I came back to people. I fixed the whole thing, and then I, I went go again on that third day. That that day, anyway. I talked to you a little bit later about that day, and then that's because of that that I finished. The right tools, the right sponsor, the right timing, and the right attitude. So. Yeah. So I, I, I um, welcome you to the show also to go and see all those guys and uh, we'll talk about adventure. It's, at Honda it's a big thing now. I think all the other manufacturers also think about what adventure riding is all about. And uh, yeah, enjoy your, the show. Thank you very much. This being my third motorcycle show in uh, in the eastern Canada, I haven't gone out west, but I've talked to folks who have gone out west. And uh, I'll tell you what, after the two Toronto motorcycle shows, and uh, and this one is, is showing indications of the same thing. And the, the only phrase I can think of to uh, to cap it all up is, what recession? Well, things look good in this industry. <laughs>
Thank you very much.